the search for a green gold marijuana, the CIN lecture series with Honorable Audley Shaw. You see, I'm from the real Jamaica. I'm from Manchester like you. I'm from where I know in Ganja area. And I want to know um, how much does it cost for, for a Ganja license? Rums of Puerto Rico brings their pop-up tour to New York. Puerto Rican rums. Don Q is one of the Puerto Rican rums. Bacardi. Awesome event. Country Chicken country with celebrity chicken chef Patrick Simpson reasons. on this week's In the Kitchen. That goes with it. There's a lot that goes on for this dish. You're watching Come Chat With Me, a Caribbean lifestyle magazine. And I'm your host, Ziggy Bless. We're here once again at the Schoenberg Center for Research in Black Culture for another CIN lecture series. It is raining out there uh, in such an incredible form and fashion that when I walked in here, I expected to see maybe 20 people or so. And I walked in and I said, God, they really want to know the message. We are extremely proud to come to Harlem every single year and partner with Mr. Hill and everybody else within um, the Caribbean diaspora. It is really a pleasure for me to address you this evening. For the last 97 years, Grace Kennedy has been serving this community, the Caribbean community. I am a very, 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 very proud Jamaican. And I am a particularly proud to be here and to be a part of the CIN family. The theme, the search for green gold marijuana, is an important business discussion. Very important business discussion. A discussion that relates to jobs, economic development, etc. And it's very important that we are here because if we are not here, whatever opportunities exist in the economic realm will certainly not be uh, directed to people of color. I had the pleasure of sitting in on a um, press briefing at one of the major media outlets based in New York City. I had the pleasure of meeting the minister before and had not heard him present. But I will tell you this much. You are in for an engaging, a penetrating, and a very, very eye-opening conversation. Jamaica is an internationally recognized brand and with the power of reggae music is now recognized as also as a major cannabis brand. We have made great progress in recognizing the Rastafarian community ability to use ganja as a sacrament and decriminalizing up to two ounces. But our real focus as a country is developing true medical products which can bring health and wellness to Jamaica and to the world. In preparation for establishing the framework, and this is important, for a legal cannabis sector, and to ensure the strategic growth and development of the sector, we of course established the Cannabis Licensing Authority in June of 2016. The mandate is to create regulations to guide the development of an orderly legal cannabis and medicinal hemp industry in Jamaica for the use of the plant for medical, therapeutic, and scientific purposes. Ensure that regulations created and activities within the industry are in keeping with Jamaica's international obligations. There is a foreign country that wants to dig up the cockpit country. The Prime Minister has declared unequivocally, and I'm repeating it now, that no area of the zoned, declared cockpit country will be allowed for mining. None. In Jamaica, we have taken the approach that the small farmers who have been part of the illegal trade should be given an opportunity to convert themselves to being a part of the legal industry. In fact, that is the, the, why we have personally 
pushed the Alternative Development Program. You see, I'm from the real Jamaica. I'm from Manchester like you. I'm from where I know in Ganja area. And I want to know um, how much does it cost for, for a Ganja license? Uh, um, the cost? Yes. All right, then you have the CLA head right here. Yeah. Um, and he can, he can advise you. You can chat with him afterwards. But, uh, but it's not, I, I wouldn't say it's a prohibition. So is it cost. something that a lot of poor people can afford? I, I, I don't think it is prohibitive. And as I said to you, yes. work in progress. We are, we are developing various models to make sure we embrace everybody. Yeah, because I don't want this to be a lecture that about the benefits that will accrue to people who have already gotten rich out of ganja because I'm from the real Jamaica. I know all about who get, have gotten rich out of ganja. There's still a great deal of work to be done. No different from many other jurisdictions who are navigating this rapidly growing and evolving industry. As at the end of September of this year, the CLA has already issued 47 licenses with, with an additional 12 applicants set to make final arrangements for the granting of their licenses. What are we doing to preserve the indigenous seeds of the ganja that Jamaica grows? We know that our, our strains, some of our strains of ganja are so unique that even where there have been, I am aware that there have been attempts to take some of those plants to try to propagate them elsewhere, and they fail, okay? Because they just don't have the microclimatic, the uniqueness of the microclimatic conditions that we have. The concern of many of us, the little people, is that in this search for green gold, we are concerned that this could become a cash cow for many elected officials, the private sector, and foreign investors. The government of Jamaica is leading the way in establishing what we call an alternative development program to incorporate traditional small growers in, in cannabis. There are many opportunities that abound. The medical cannabis industry is helping to drive economic development in many countries. And in a, in a sense, Jamaica, Jamaica has some catching up to do. Research over the years has documented the potential of cannabis to positively impact the treatment of a multitude of ailments, including chronic pain, insomnia, post-traumatic stress disorder, HIV AIDS, cancers of various types, epilepsy, neurological disorders, and many more. Green gold, marijuana. When you hear that topic, what comes to mind? It comes to mind about legalization and decriminalization. You see, because I really believe, you see, marijuana or ganja is not a drug. They made it into a drug. Marijuana is from a seed that God made and it's in the Bible. It tells you whatever seeds and plants that I have is for food and medicine. We know of the power of the opioid and pharmaceutical lobby. Okay? And what we have to do is to continually bring forth and the evidence now of, of the fact that cannabis-based medicine, medicine is a credible, real alternative to the destructiveness of opioids, that that is on the table and can no longer be ignored by the government of the United States at the highest level. We have the best ganja in Jamaica. Not like the ones that they import in here yeah. with all the garbage in it. In Jamaica and ganja is pure. Jamaica fully recognizes and appreciates not only the economic but the health and wellness potential of this miracle plant of which Jamaica is well blessed and endowed with unique strains and we remain steadfast on our mission to fully exploit this green gold to our mutual benefit. Today we're here in the city, yeah, at the Jungle Bird, yeah man, you don't know, for the rooms of Puerto Rico pop-up tour, and you don't know, they're going all over the US, you know what I mean, keeping these type of events, 
So they're in the city now and come chat with me. Is here to cover it and show you all what's going on. All of the good stuff. So the rum drinker them get ready. Come chat with me with they. Rum lovers and newcomers came out to the new Manhattan hot spot Jungle Bird to learn about the lavish flavors of authentic Puerto Rican rums. Enjoy a special menu of rum cocktails and groove to the infectious rhythms of the music. Ramon Diaz, Rums of Puerto Rico brand ambassador, presented a tasting seminar on Puerto Rico's finest aged rums, offering insights into their history, methods of production, and guided tasters through each rum's uniquely delicious profile. Tonight, we, we're gonna taste um, some Bacardi Limited Reserve. That is at the top of the line of Bacardi. That is a rum 10 to 16 year old. Um, you know, as you know, Bacardi is the best-selling rum in the world. Um, also, you can taste um, Don Q. We're gonna taste Don Q Gran Añejo. Don Q Gran Añejo is, is one of the best rum of Puerto Rico. It's, it's one of the best-selling rum in the island. And then we're gonna finish with um, Ron del Barrilito, that Ron of the Barrilito, I always say this is one of the favorites of all the bartenders. So we got three different brands, the top of the line of each one, you know, you, you're gonna have uh, the best from choice tonight. From Puerto Rico is a government program. We're part of a division of the Puerto Rico Industrial Development Company. And what we do is we help in the promotion and marketing of the brands and we provide economic incentives to the, all the rum brands that are manufacturing in Puerto Rico. Let's gonna taste first Donk You. And let me talk a little bit of Donk You. Donk You is the best seller rum in the island. It's the best seller rum in Puerto Rico. Um, Donk You start to produce rum in 1865, more than 150 years. In that case, it, this is Don Q Gran Añejo. It's a blend, nine to 12 year old. And it's a very good rum. Also, that bottle have a special lid. If you, when you get busy in your home, you can measure exactly one ounce and a half. It's gonna start to taste a rum. What I need to do, at first, you need to steer in the snifter, and then you're gonna look it. And what you're gonna look? You're gonna look the color, the Chinese, you're gonna look the drops under are the legs. That legs come more slowly, that's mean what? The rum have more body. So the rum is more aged. You can smell in one side of the nose first. Then you can smell in both of them. Well, let's gonna taste it. Now how are we gonna taste it? You don't, you don't wanna pour in your mouth and stir in your mouth. Remember, this is 40% of alcohol. This is not a wine. If you do a stir in your mouth, you're gonna feel like Lister in the morning. Uh, you don't want that. So you, you're gonna put it in the center of the mouth for one or two seconds, and then you're gonna fill in the chest. A lot of people think that Bacardi moved to Puerto Rico because, you know, because Castro, because the revolution. But that's not true. Castro, or the revolution, was in 1959. And in 1960, Castro take the distillery of Bacardi and then Bacardi stay only with the distillery that have in Puerto Rico. We're gonna taste today the Bacardi Limited Reserve. This is a limited edition of Bacardi. Have a serial number in the back. When you buy the bottle, they give you a certificate of authenticity. This is the most difficult part of my job. <laughs> Salud. Salud. Barrilito. Use a maceration process in the blending. So they got 23 different dry fruits and make a maceration. And then in the blending, maybe a 1% of the rum have part of that maceration of these 23 different dry fruits. So let's gonna taste it. <laughs> we featured three arm um, rums here tonight. Yes. 
I think about the Bacardi, the Don Q. And what's the other name? Yes, we have Bacardi, Limited Reserve, uh, Don Q, Gran Añejo, and we also have Rondal Barrilito. Those are three of our brands, but we have a couple more in Puerto Rico. We have over seven distilleries in Puerto Rico. Yeah, man, Rums of Puerto Rico pop up tour. That's where we're at right now. And we're having some vibes, sipping on some rum. How you doing, my brother? Bless, 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 man. Good to be here. Real man. What are you drinking? I'm drinking an old fashioned with a Bacardi, even though I wanted it with a Don Q. So you do with a Bacardi? Yes, yes. But a Don Q would be better. Don Q would have been, it was where it's at. The aged Don Q that I had was, it was just different, you know? It hit different. And so, like, I, I appreciate uh, carefully curated liquor. Why are you here today? Uh, I'm here because I wanted to taste some really good rum. What have you tasted so far? So we tasted some Don Cu, Bacardi, and Rom Barrilito. And I was actually pleasantly surprised with the Rom Barrilito. I didn't expect it. It was delicious. Puerto Rican rums. Don Q is one of the Puerto Rican rums. Bacardi, awesome event at Jungle Bird. They know what they're doing. Represent Puerto Rico. They need us. This is official Puerto Rico rum. They told me how they make it, distill it, it's awesome. Which one of those rum are your favorites? So, um, I obviously, I'm biased, because okay. I work with Barrilito. So okay. Barrilito is Puerto Rico's oldest rum. Okay. We've been in production for 138 years. It's a sipping rum, so we age it in um, sherry oloroso cast. So it's like a sipping, dry rum. So this is what I'm having over here now. The way that I like talk about it is just like we grew up in the rum community. Barrilito is the rum that you will have with your grandpa when you're playing dominoes. So like you will slow sip it. Bacardi is the rum of the youth. That's what we drink, you know, when we go into college. That's what we drink. And then Don Cu is like the locals rum. But Barrilito is the, the cognac of the Caribbean. <laughs> Bringing a little bit of like flavor yeah. to the New York scene. It's just like yeah. legit from back home. This is what we do. The music, the people, the rum. Yeah. That's how we do it. And the food. And the food. The whole <laughs> culture. Yes. You know what I mean? <laughs> This week I have something in store for you guys. You're gonna be in for a treat. As you know already, I'm always gonna do something totally different. I wish by you day in at the kitchen. In at the kitchen. We call this country chicken because of many different reasons. The ingredients and the stuff that goes with it, there's a lot that goes on for this dish. So you're gonna definitely enjoy making this dish. So make sure you get your pen and paper and follow along. So you're gonna need a three pound chicken. Um, I would say a three pound, two and a half pound of chicken. Put all the ingredients together. Um, lay out your ingredients. It's always the best way before you start cooking. Think of all the ingredients that you need, lay them out and have them ready so you don't have to be running around and looking for stuff. You're gonna put your dry ingredients, your salt, your pepper, your whole base seasoning, a little bit of paprika, um, pepper flakes, all the dry ingredients you're gonna combine together. Then you're gonna add a little bit of olive oil over it just to help to make it moist. A little bit of thyme, fresh thyme, then you can go for your gravy master. Your gravy master is gonna help you give it that color and that color you're shooting for. Your fresh garlic, you put that in. At this point, you make sure your hands are clean, marinated, make sure all the, the season and everything is going rubbed in properly. You can cover it up with a plastic wrap, put it inside your refrigerator. Get your skillet nice and hot, and when your skillet is nice and hot, then you're gonna put your chicken in. At this point, you put your chicken in. You're gonna then make your chicken marinate a little bit, um, basically burn in the oil. And this you're gonna do for probably about, um, I would say four minutes. You're gonna do this. You're basically sealing in the flavor by kind of letting your chicken kind of cook just like this for a couple minutes. Um, you're sealing in the flavor. So when you're getting ready now to add all your fresh ingredients, your onion, your scallion, your thyme, 
red pepper, your green pepper, um, all of that, you kind of add them in little by little. You can then go with a little bit more of the season just to help enhance the flavor. At this point, you can put your potato in and you can put your carrots in, um, your red bell pepper, your green bell pepper, you can put those stuff in because it's going to take a while to cook the chicken, so by then the potato will be cooked. Had some ketchup in. The ketchup is gonna help me with my flavor and get my flavor profile going while it's cooking. So at this point, you're just gonna let it cook for a little bit. Let it cook for probably about 10 minutes. Nice medium flame. You don't want to have it too hot because you don't want it to dry out all the flavor. So you want it to nice medium. Let it take its own little time and cook. Don't rush it. Every now and then you can go back and you can check on it. Get down the flavor to where you want it taste as you go along if you feel it need a little bit more salt a little bit more pepper a little bit more of the whole base seasoning if it need a little bit of kick then you can add what you need um, I leave my tomato for last and I have my tomato in when it's almost finished and go ahead and I can finish it off with my last little touch of my flavor after I taste it and I say you know what I need a little bit more of this and a little bit more of that one thing with recipes you got to be careful you can follow recipe but you also have to guide yourself exactly how you need it when it's almost finished you can then put a little bit of flour a teaspoon of flour to some water and you can mix it together and you can add the flour in help and i'm just going to serve this easy with some broccoli and some spinach and some pasta real simple something different like I say it's not all the time you need the rice and you need the yam dumpling and banana sometimes you want something different so I'm serving this with a pasta and this is real nice and the pasta already have the veg inside of it so you will definitely enjoy the amount of different things that's going on for this dish very flavorful very colorful this is something you'll definitely enjoy All right, guys, you see that? We did this together. See how simple it was? I know you're saying, yes, chef, it was simpler for you, but it's not. But trust me, if you follow all the little steps I just did, you're gonna end up with just the same presentation, same flavor, same taste. In at the kitchen this week, you know already, get yourself a glass of lemonade, and you're good to go. As a matter of fact, get a nice cold red striped beer, and you're good to go. In at the kitchen, see you next week. Stay connected with Come Chat With Me. Thanks for watching Come Chat With Me. See you next week. Girl, you say you're tired. Me want to go tired of what are you leaving? Make sure you don't come back. Oh, pay the bills. Don't provide the food for the bad when you're dead lonely. Me see him one give your comfort with good loving. Hold on your body when it has follow your friend them. You know see them love chat, chat no man no want them. Not even bet them, no got take it over. You know what I'm paying up like that. Oh, I, oh, I. Simply Kills.